Hi everybody, it's Liz Bab Fanlo. How are you? We're getting started with our Wisdom for Women tonight. And to get started first, uh, let's get acquainted. If this is your first time watching, put a little one down in the comments area for me and let me know where you're from. And while you're doing that, I'll introduce myself. Again, I'm Liz Bab Fanlo, and I have a global makeup, hair, and skincare business. I'm also a former technology and financial executive with a 16-year career in that arena, the last eight of which were here in the San Francisco Bay Area, where I ended the, la the last eight years at Charles Schwab. I was a vice president of product development and product technology. But I am now turned entrepreneur, and I really wake up every morning from a business perspective thinking about how can I help my clients and my friends look and feel their absolute very best because I truly believe if you like what you see out here, then what you feel in here is dramatically improved. And that's the name of the game. And so with patience and persistence and one person at a time, I feel like I can really make a positive impact on many, many, many people. So as part of that, I am a lifelong learner and that is why I started Wisdom for Women, this series you're watching now because I love talking to other women in business and getting a little nugget of wisdom from their careers. I always felt as I was going through my careers that if I could get one or two nuggets of wisdom from other people during training and that kind of thing, then it was a win-win. So hopefully we'll get some nuggets of wisdom tonight. Um, and we are so blessed to be joined tonight by one of my oldest friends and uh, best business partners, Susie Lester. Susie and I met about a decade ago and uh, we instantly bonded because she is blessed with something that actually you cannot learn, you cannot be trained on. She's the definition of the law of attraction. She is one of the warmest, most approachable people I have ever had the pleasure of working with. And I try to seep like whatever that magic sauce is uh, from her, but it's really truly a gift that she has. And she also has an incredible command of colloquial English that uh, puts everybody at ease. And so these, I'm sorry to say, these are her special gifts, but at least you get to listen to some of that tonight. What is going to happen is she will share some of her nuggets of wisdom that she's learned throughout her long career. And um, uh, we're just really blessed and I'm very excited to be able to ask her for just one or two of them tonight. So with no further ado, I'm lucky Susie's actually in town and she's going to join me here live tonight, something new and different on Wisdom for Women. So Susie, come on in. Okay, so thank you so much, Susie, for being here. I really appreciate it. Super excited, as I said. I'm actually going to ask Susie to tell us a little bit about herself. So Susie, please tell us, um, maybe start out a little bit about your private life, if you don't mind sharing, and also give us a little bit of your beginning professional background. Liz, thank you so much for the lovely uh, introduction. I'm humbled. It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm truly humbled and thank you so very much. You're so As Liz shared with you, my name is Susie Lester and I am a wife and mother of two extraordinary children. And Well, let's just say, don't all moms say that about their children? Tobin, who's 16, and Annie, who's 12, uh, keep me rather busy. And the uh, reason that I decided to retire my 18-year career with Nordstrom was so that I would have the opportunity to spend more time with my children. Absolutely. And uh, tell us a little bit what was your career at Nordstrom? How did you, did you start out at the beginning, the lower ranks? Tell us about it. I had the opportunity right out of college to start uh, with Nordstrom on the sales floor and then I was promoted to be a department manager and then a buyer, which I loved every minute of being a buyer. And then the last seven years of my career, I was a store manager. It was my- a big store. <laughs> <laughs> I managed the Palo Alto Nordstrom and every single moment of my career, I loved working with Nordstrom and it was an, it's an amazing company as we all know. but. I quickly learned that being a wife and being a mother and working in corporate America and the hours in which I needed to be at work in order to fulfill my job 
were not going to give me an opportunity to spend the quality time and miss out on any of those those special moments with my children. So I retired after 18 years to be a stay-at-home mom. And then when you were a stay-at-home mom, I know you were still quite active um, in charity work and that kind of thing. What, what made you decide to leave well, I shouldn't say leave because you still do so much charity work. What, what made you decide um, when you sort of had the yearning to work again, which you told me about, what made you decide to do that instead of maybe, or sorry, what made you decide to start your own businesses to become an entrepreneur um, besides maybe going back part-time to corporate America or maybe finding a more flexible company to work with? What, what was the yearning um, to be an entrepreneur? Well, like I said before, Liz, I think it's really important uh, to acknowledge working in corporate America versus being an entrepreneur. I have an opportunity, owning my own business, to work my schedule around my children's schedule. And each and every day, I feel like it is such a blessing to have that opportunity. And, you know, let's face it, the world is changing. And with, with change uh, comes, you know, trying new things and right. I'm grateful to you Liz for giving me that opportunity and sharing our business. Yeah well I know and I know you don't have just one business so I, I know you have the entrepreneurial bug in you um, and that's that's something that uh, is, you've actually been able to grow. So let's so let's talk about the very beginning. Um, what were your hopes and dreams for your businesses when you started them? Just little little tiny things. I think most importantly, my children never saw me when I worked at Nordstrom. So they never saw their mom in her career path. And I think it's really important in today's times, especially for girls, to see their mother go out there and be able to provide and be able to contribute to a household. I, I think that that is something I want to impart on both of my children and especially my daughter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, so that was the beginning, and now, you know, fast forward five, six, seven, ten years since you started, I know, one of your first businesses. Um, what are your dreams now for these? Do you see yourself continuing to be an entrepreneur, say, five years down the line? Um, where do you see yourself taking this? What do, you, what do you see yourself creating? Well, like I said, Tobin is 16 now, and... College is way too close for me, and Annie following the footsteps of Tobin, uh, one day those kids are gonna be not at home, and I wanna be able to have something to fall back on, something to call my own, and continue to grow this business, that these businesses that I have in place. And I think that's really, really important for, for me as a woman, and for me to be able to impart on my children. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that uh, that uh, you and I will be working together for quite some Absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You're not going to get rid of me, Liz. Uh, okay. Well, let's get to the crux of the series, Wisdom for Women, where hopefully we will get a nugget or two of wisdom from Susie. And what I like to ask each of the business women that I interview, share with us something that either you wished that uh, you knew back then what you know now, that classic question, or maybe it's something that you do want to impart to your daughter or uh, maybe to someone that's my daughter's age in her 20s or just something that you wish that you could share with others and tell them and that they would listen to, that they would absorb, that the amoeba would you know, take it all in. So pretend like they are. <laughs> okay, so what would it be, Susie? I think uh, what I find important is to put all preconceived ideas the wayside and take that true leap of faith because you never know until you try. And that is my biggest telltale for me. Dig deep, take a leap of faith, put preconceived notions aside. We as women look at other women for, we value other women's opinions greatly. Oh yes, sometimes too much. <laughs> yes, and I think that with, with the world ever changing, uh, Looking at different business opportunities is very important. We need to take those preconceived notions the wayside. If we don't evolve, we die, right? That's one of the cliche sayings. I always look back at, uh, you think of, you know, with my retail background, 
Banana Republic. Would we all be shopping at Banana Republic if they still had a Jeep in the window? Would we all want to buy khaki khaki and more khaki? <laughs> well, I don't think so. So my, where, where I want you to understand is take that leap of faith. Get out of your head. Put those preconceived notions aside and really think positive in, positive out. I can and I will do this. Yeah, I, that's great advice, and um, we hear it a lot. Uh, and I wanted to ask you further, I go a little deeper. So I feel acknowledging the negative Nelly inside of me is half the battle. Um, I, I acknowledge it's there, but I guess what I mean more is the awareness of when it sneaks in. It's, you know, little tiny head in there, and the voices start getting louder. And I'm just curious, I think that happens to everybody, right? So awareness is half the battle, but once you're aware of it, what do you do then, Susie? What do you do? What's your Jedi mind trick for actually putting the preconceived notions aside? How do you, how do you, how do you actually do it? it? As you and I spoke earlier, I think you have to get rid of the mean girl perceptions out of your mind. And like I said earlier, it has to be that positive in, positive out. And what is your end game? What do you want to achieve? What is your goal? What is your true north? Is it to start something and never fulfill it and never achieve it? Or are you going to put that goal out there and truly achieve so that everyone else can see that what your decision was was the very best decision? Yeah, for you. And I think you were mentioning to me as well that you have a true north that you often call your your sort of your inner wisdom or your inner uh, your gut. Yes, Liz, you, you remember so well that we as mothers, how many times do we talk to our children about different things and we have a gut feeling and we know that maybe what they're sharing with us isn't exactly the truth. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's no different than that inner voice that says, you know what, I have to listen to all these people and this isn't the right decision for me. And you have to put that the wayside and go with your gut feeling and move forward in what your goals and aspirations are. Yeah. Yeah, well, you've certainly lived that, um, going from executive at Nordstrom to startup to starting your own things. It's just, I mean, that, there's nothing more difficult, I think, in the business world because those are two huge changes, and you have to put your beginner's mindset on, and I think that's so hard um, to be a beginner entrepreneur when you have achieved, you had achieved, you know, the echelon of uh, your your corporate career. So kudos to you. Thank you for being a great example for all of us. And thanks everybody for watching Wisdom for Women. And we'll be back in another couple of weeks with another great interview. So have a great evening. Thank you, Liz. Oh, you're so welcome.